Tesla changed the way electric cars were built a few years back when it introduced the structural battery pack. Instead of mounting a battery underneath the car uh, like a big box, they made the pack part of the structure itself. So the battery was also the floor and even part of the frame. It reduced uh, parts and weight and also some cost and made the car stiffer. So there was a lot of benefits to it. It also meant they could squeeze more energy into the same space. Now, almost every automa uh, automaker has copied the idea of this in one way or another. They've given it different names and that sort of thing. BYD, CATL, even Volkswagen, they've all done their own version of it. But now uh, there's something new. An American company, I did say American company, called 24M Technologies say they found a better way again. They call it electrode to pack. And if it works the way that they claim, it could mean EVs with way more than a thousand miles of range or about 1600 kilometers of range. Let's jump into it. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Really appreciate your time. These are the channel members. Thank you to these people who took a couple of dollars every month to uh, support me making my videos. I work really hard on them. And uh, please do consider subscribing. I really wanna get the subscriber count up so we can grow the channel and uh, yeah, so let's jump into it. So who are 24M? They are a Massachusetts-based battery company that's been quietly developing, quietly, you know, in the corner, uh, new manufacturing methods for years. And this latest idea is quite a simple one, really. And I genuinely mean it's very simple, very, very clever. So instead of having thousands of uh, cells welded together inside, or laser welded or anything like that, nothing too complicated, and uh, or, or even modules and then packed into a frame which is how most evs are built they're getting rid of all of that all the complexity no individual cells no castings or casings or modules just the literally the working parts the electrodes built directly into the structure immediately the, the big question the elephant in the room is is it repairable? Because if, if, if the whole thing is one single big battery, can you, if you crash it or shunt it or anything like that, is it going to, you know, do you, you can't replace a cell, can you? Or in 10 years time when it's a used vehicle. This is one of the things we'll talk about because it's a very big deal. If you picture a Tesla battery pack or even a BYD's blade battery, there's a lot of dead weight in there. Loads of space and loads of things going on. The cell casings, the cooling plates, uh, the metal framework, the insulation, 24M says around half of that space doesn't actually store any energy at all. So they've designed a process where up to 80% of the pack is made from active material, the stuff that actually stores power and then releases the power, which is, a, in, in principle, that's a cracking idea, I think. That could almost double the energy density, not the chemistry, just the packaging, which means, in theory, you could build a mid-size SUV with a normal size battery pack that goes uh, 1,200 or 1,300 kilometers on a charge, maybe 15 or 1,600 in some of the bigger ones. That's twice what most long-range EVs can do today, at the end of 2025. And what's interesting is that this isn't some uh, like a pie-in-the-sky, solid-state tech uh, thing. It's achievable. We're literally, with today's materials that you can see in Teslas right now, you can use lithium ion phosphate, nickel, manganese, cobalt, or even sodium ion batteries, even though you'll get lower range with those. The platform doesn't really care. It's basically a new way of assembling batteries, not reinventing the chemistry inside them. It's, it's really just a reinvention of how, you know, of the idea of how we how, how do we pack them into the casing underneath the car. So the potential benefits, they are huge, and it could mean a lot uh, of extra range for us. And also, you know, less wasted material, simpler assembly, it's cheaper to make, fewer welds, less cooling co complexity. It could also make packs lighter and cheaper to produce. 24M claims that it could reduce cost per kilowatt hour by as much as 30%, even if that's lofty, 30%, let's just go with half, 15%. That's an am amazing saving when you consider that batteries make up around a third of the total cost of an EV at the end of 2025. But of course, there, there are challenges. One big question is obviously repairability, which I mentioned a minute ago. In a traditional pack, if a few cells fail, you can replace that module in this design, obviously, you are a little bit shafted. You can't do that because there are no modules inside it. It's all bonded together as one large single unit. So if there's a fault in one area, do you lose the whole pack? That's still unclear. Then obviously that's a big deal. And that would mean that basically maybe insurance prices will go up or 
there are a few things. You can say your ideas in the comments. I'm sure there's a lot of collateral uh, damage for this idea, but the net gain when you purchase the car would be that you get a better range straight out of the bat. And for manufacturers, that's a really big deal. EV battery factories are designed around cells and modules. Retooling those production lines for something like this could cost billions. Uh, cooling systems, welding, robots, uh, all the automation, all of it basically would need to be... Still, this kind of rethinking is exactly what I think is needed. It's a practical engineering-based step forward. It's building on what we know already, not a headline-grabbing miracle or a change in chemistry. Uh, 24M's approach reminds me a bit of uh, what Tesla did with gigacasting. You, you basically just simplify and integrate and remove unnecessary parts. BYD did it too with the blade battery and its cell to pack system. Each time you remove another layer of inefficiency, things get cheaper and simpler, basically. If electrode to pack works as well as they say it does, then it's the next natural step after structural packs, I would imagine. You're not just removing modules or cells, you're removing uh, the concept of cells altogether. It's almost like a liquid cooled or a liquid battery frozen into a solid frame. There's another interesting part to the story. So the politics, the United States, obviously they want, uh, they want to compete with China in battery technology and China already has a big head start. And by a big head start, that's a big understatement, isn't it? BYD and CATL control basically a huge share of the global market. CATL is the world's largest battery manufacturer. They've already commercialized sodium ion batteries and their supply chains are vertically integrated from the mine to the factory gate, basically, as those of the vehicles leave. So 24M is pitching this as a way for American companies to leapfrog ahead without really relying on the same old designs. So it's a kind of a, truly, it's a reinvention of the battery. Whether that happens or not, then is anyone's guess, but it is a good uh, thing to see. It's, a, it's you know, fresh ideas coming out of the US that don't rely on uh, hype or solid state batteries or new chemistry or anything like that. So one thing that stands out to me is that 24M's design could make it easier to build battery packs that are custom shaped. Right now, battery packs are mostly rectangular. If you could build the electrodes directly into the floor or, or the body, you could use more irregular shapes wrap them around the cabin or down into the sills or anything like that to use the space more efficiently. And I'm sure there's a lot of engineers who will have lots to say about that because there's obviously the safety aspect, isn't there? It's the sort of thing that really could give designers far more freedom when building small cars or vans or even aircraft, or maybe the, the back of the battery can come up under the rear seats, for example. Maybe there's a, you know, there's a cost to that in the, in, you know, in the safety department, but it would give you a bigger range. And uh, yeah, it's just an idea that I've uh, seen written down in some of the notes. They do mention aircraft. Uh, this is this is probably controversial, isn't it? 24M says that this technology could also work for electric vertical takeoff aircraft or EV tolls. Uh, I don't see that being the first application, personally, because those vehicles are tiny volume very safety sensitive, but for cars, I think it's much more realistic. Even if the range increase isn't a thousand miles, even if it's 700 miles, I mean, Tesla's new Model 3 now can do genuinely about 420, 400 miles on a charge. So if you can imagine doing that, you know, with a new battery that can do 700 miles, it would also make smaller and cheaper cars viable again. It would make them have a 700 or 600 mile range or a kilometer, even a kilometer range, 400 miles. So you could fit a battery pack in a car like a BYD Seagull or a BYD Dolphin, something like that, get five, six, seven hundred kilometers of range. That would be, I think, the dream for so many people, really. Normal people who have normal jobs like teachers or doctors or nurses and things like that. Of course, like anything new, it will definitely take time, maybe five years before we really see this in production. But if companies like 24M can prove that it's safe, maybe some people get on board, maybe even Tesla or anything like that, or uh, Rivian, and they can prove that it's safe and reliable and recyclable, then I think maybe it's, it's only a matter of time really before we do actually start to see it happen. What do you think about it? Would you rather have an EV that can go a thousand miles or one that's easier to repair and cheaper to build? Personally, I'd take 
uh, repairability probably and do with a smaller range. Repairability is a very big deal, I think, for me, and that's I'm a bit of an ad- advocate for that. Your right to repair things, but it's it's worth thinking about, I think. And uh, what happens if something fails inside the pack? How do we deal with that, and what does it look like? Thank you very much for watching. I really genuinely appreciate all of the people that watch my videos. I try to give you as much uh, value as I can in my videos because I, uh, you know, I really like the fact that so many people are enjoying my work. I get emails saying people love my my stuff. So thank you very much. I, I post every day about what's really happening in the electric vehicle world. And uh, if you want to learn about EVs, if you want to get sort of into it as a sort of an interesting thing to talk about just subscribe. It's free. You're very welcome to. And uh, any questions, you can email me if any or any of you are really interested to, to do that. And uh, Or just comment below. That's fine. So thank you so much.